destination is the stars. Hello, and welcome back to the Sci-Fi Roundtable Podcast. This is DC Ballard, and today I'm going to be reading for you the Roundtable's Drabble Competition. Entries are read in no particular order, save that that's the order they were given to me. The second place winner and then the actual winner will be at the end. These are, again, in no particular order. And if I do screw up someone's name, uh, I do apologize ahead of time. Uh, I will do my best. Starting off, we have Arthur Daigle, Warlock. Lesser powers of darkness, I seek your aid. Let us bargain, for I have much to offer in return. Mysterious voice, I hear and respond. You wish power, wealth, grandeur, revenge? Warlock, all this and more. But from you I seek only magic enough for two spells this week. Mysterious voice, for two spells... You must sing the Happy Puppy Song once a day in front of at least 50 witnesses. Make it nice and loud, too. Warlock. Wait, what? Mysterious voice. Yeah. Cthulhu wants to wipe out humanity. Me. I like making petitioners look like chumps. Start singing. Next up, we have Richard Burke. I glanced up from my book at the braided suspension bridge cables. A rainbow of spilt fuel shimmered in the sunlight. Ahead of me, the hatchback with the baby on board sticker slithered to a halt. The rapidly approaching truck cab reared up in the oncoming lane. My mind flashed back. What had I selected when prioritizing between others and self? The automated driver steered my car into the approaching traffic. I closed my eyes expecting to die. Tires fought for traction. Then silence. The gap in the barrier told me the lorry driver had ranked others higher than me. Next up, we have Fabrice Rigaud. The professor bargained with the devil. Prove Raymond hypothesis within a day for my soul. Otherwise, make me a rich man. The devil had hated mathematics for ages. He tricked many scientists just because he couldn't stand science. But a bargain bound him. He worked like hell, as only he could traveled through time and to other dimensions. A day later, he had no solution. So he took the only decision he could. He appeared in the professor's classroom and laid out his equations on the blackboard. Since then, any who knock at the door is transformed into a frog. Wait, what? <laughs> Next up, we have Gary G. Little. The walkie jabber mimsed across the glade and shimmered down the slope. Slipping, it slided and in that slide it slipped and tumbled up to the valley floor far below. Wings akimbo, with four sturdy legs all spraddled. The magnificent diminutive beast sprawled in an iridescent shimmer of scales. Who the heck turned the gravity off? It wailed to no one, but everyone replied. How should we know? The knob troll looked at the troves, snuggled all cozy in their groves. Stupid walkie, done fell up this morning. The terrups snuggled and stuttered. Careful he is not. Down he will fall. Next up, Stephen Landry. Have you heard about the glitch? Once you see it, you can't forget about it, you know. One minute, I'm minding my own business, and the next, it's there waiting for me. I see it when I sleep now, too, in my dreams, staring me down from the alley just like it did before taking the girl. The sweet little thing. All I did was disappear for one minute. Dozens go missing every day. I keep hearing stories about it. More dreams. It drags you to some other world, and if you survive long enough, you get to come back. Next is Rick Ty, Thrill Kings, Conundrum, from the 100-100 Word sequel project. As Sky tested her Vortex bike in the realm lines, nonstop tagged along. And together they arced across vistas of swirling magenta and deep orange. All right, Nonstop said, grooving. Here's one. You're the xenologist. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Sky leaned back, drove high and soared. The egg, she said. 
What? Really? Yes. First the conditions for life, then life. First the pawn, then the amoeba. Nonstop slowed. Nah, that would mean the egg came from nowhere. No, Sky said, racing her bike into a vault of young blue. That would mean the mother wasn't a chicken. Next up, Joe Noble. If I pull this lever, we could die, said Court. Then don't pull it, said Mabel. Unless... Unless what? demanded Court. The lever was getting hot, and a red glow spreading upward from the base and towards his hand. Unless it's a simulation. Perhaps we're being tested, mused Mabel. Court grimaced. The angry red glow was approaching the handle now, the sweat on his hand steaming as it evaporated. Just do it, said Mabel, biting her lip. Court gripped the handle and pulled back on the lever with a grunt. Dispensing new sun, chimed a recorded voice from some unknown source. And now we have Jane Jago. We're in space. There cannot be water dripping. No. What's the smegging noise, then? There is no noise. But Zamo knew there was noise. He also knew nobody was going to do smeg. So he suited up. Getting one of the more reliable drones to man the airlock, he went out. He turned his face to the direction from which the noise had come, and his jaw dropped so fast it cracked against the plexiglass of his helmet. His feet were on solid ground, and there was vegetation around him. He took off his helmet and walked away from the ship. Next up, E.M. Swifthook. Valeria Dalka held up the vial. And this holds immortality? Kahaya shook her head. Not immortality. You can still die from illness or accident. It just reserves and prevents the degeneration of natural aging. Dolka made a dismissive gesture. Immortality in effect. But is humanity ready for it? Of course. It'll make people value life more as it is no longer ephemeral. It will make them consider how they treat the planet as they themselves, not their descendants, will be living with the consequences. Dalka smiled and put down the vial. You really don't understand people very well, do you? And now, Cindy Tomomichael, Benjamin Rupert Jones. His name was up in lights, just as he had always dreamed. Like a movie star on the ancient silver screen, Benjamin, otherwise known as Benny, smoothed down his costume, took a deep breath, and skated joyfully into the arena. The mixed crowd cheered, urging him to greater heights. Drops of sweat streaked his Max Factor pancake makeup as he glazed to a halt millimeters from the judge's table. Benny wriggled in his silver costume, rippling over his long, segmented body. How anyone actually human competed anymore amazed him. Deep space skating just wasn't a sport for bipeds. And now, Stephanie Barr. Cold, they called Kaylin, as she sifted through the crime scene. The blood, the torn teddy, with her features carved in granite. Thompson could see why. Not easy to investigate crimes against children, though, and she was the best. Kaylin bent and peered under the crib, then urged something out using her pen. I don't think Mama left a full bottle under her baby's bed. Test it for fingerprints. Thompson asked before thinking, Are you good because you don't care? Kaylin turned, eyes blazing with unspoken torment on Thompson. I know what it is to lose a child. Not cold. And now, Jim Middleton. Paper stood on the monastery balcony and raised his arms. The skin folded against his sides, billowed out into a photon sail. Small freckles of green grew and darkened. He ran across the marble tiles, spinning and laughing in the midday sun. Aphrodite's host body, cropped red hair glistening, stuck her head out the door. Do you want some tea or me with that? You know, I think I'm good. Today is the first time since I left my home on Phobos Station that I've gotten a good meal. The goddess reared back and threw the teapot at him. Modern men! Next, John Freeman. Title, Guilt on the Mirror. I'm just a mirror. What do I know? But the old queen, vain and cruel, was better. Who's the fairest? Was all she'd ask. One day my answers stopped pleasing her, and it ended badly for the poor, 
stupid, unimaginative woman. But Queen Snow? Mirror? Show me other worlds. How did they build that? What's an atom bomb? What's an Orion drive? Then she started bringing smiths and alchemists to see me. And babe, me answer their questions. Yesterday, her nuclear rocket soared into the sky, seeking new worlds. They'll never know what hit them. And it's all my fault. Now that sounds like a mirror that has some guilt. <laughs> and now we get to the really fun part. First up, second place, the runner-up, Edward Boutois. You must be careful, Tyronex complained as he finished repairing my arm. This design is easily damaged, I snipped back. It has no purpose. I have no purpose. I assure you, you do. He went into the next room and returned with a bundle, which he placed in my arms. Inside lay a teeny, fat version of me. This is worse designed than I am. It is a child. A genetic extrapolation of the race which died out on this planet three centuries ago. He nodded at the bundle in my arm. Your purpose is to be its mother. At last, but hardly least, and I do hope that uh, a drum roll can be inserted here, the winner, Harley Brown. Day one. I'm ready. I'm standing a few centimeters from it. I'm taking my first step. I am the first human who touched the Martian soil. Day three. We began our exploration. For the first few days... I will collect samples of rock and air. Day four. I got a few stones to analyze their composition. Nothing interesting. My work is almost finished. I'm taking the last stone and putting it into the water. A minute later, I'm taking it out. I'm speechless. Now I understand. I wasn't the first human on Mars. It's not a stone. It's a human skull. Congratulations to everybody. That was all some really great little bits of uh, short fiction. I gotta say, I got some good reactions out of it, not all of which made it into the recording. Thank you again for joining the Sci-Fi Roundtable podcast. I do hope you enjoyed. Have a great one. This was D.C. Ballard. And since this is the end of the recording, here's my own little self-promo. Might as well take advantage of it, right? You can reach me at dcballard.com, which has links to my currently available novel, Chaos Fountain, as well as a link over to my blog, where my ongoing epic sci-fi series, Log Entries, is hosted. Mm -hmm.